This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per talk. Five and six million. He is hell-bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. Morning, everybody. It's a new one for you this morning, episode 698. Coming up tomorrow morning, I talk to Dan Gamito. He is the Fired Convert Kit co-founder that you've never heard of. Most of you know Nathan, but you don't know of this guy who was fired, and he blames his father. His father made him feel not worth enough, and he missed out on a lot of equity. It's an emotional episode. It's explosive. You don't want to miss that tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. My guest this morning is Sam Couchy. He is the CEO. Actually, many of you guys may recognize him. We had him on earlier, but he's the CEO of a company called Sales Huddle, a training and development team that is using game technology to help organizations better prepare their people for the workforce. Sam, I believe last time we spoke, you had had some, something around 61 customers and 700 grand in revenue. Are you ready to take us to the top? Do it. All right, so, so update us. Last time you came on was back, I believe, in August or maybe July of last year. Uh, what does Sales Huddle do uh, for folks that don't know what it does? And then uh, where are you today in terms of customers? Got it. Yeah, great. So in a nutshell, we're a mobile game platform for employee training. So we've all sat through our fair share of workshops and trainings and videos that uh, missed the mark or put us to sleep. We take everything you need to know to do your job, whether it's selling, servicing, frontline, full-time, we gamify it into quick burst trivia games that you can use to upskill your workforce faster, better, and more effectively. And so what, again, describe to us your revenue model. Last time you said you had 61 customers, 700 grand in revenue. Are they paying monthly or is it pay as you go or what? It's monthly. So we're a SaaS model, upfront integration fee ranges from 5K all the way up to 50K. Uh, we have a monthly recurring fee that uh, is anywhere between $1,000 and up based off number of employees on the platform. Uh, we closed out last year at 1.2 million in revenue. Uh, going into this year, we have around 800k in our annual recurring revenue stream. Uh, we were at the wait. Time what is we, uh, Sam? What is what does that mean? So 800k in recurring revenue on subscription from 82 clients on our platform. Okay, so your your current run rate is you're doing you call it about 70 grand per month or 65 grand per month from 80 clients paying you monthly. Correct. Okay. And so how did you do 1.2 million last year? Explain how the professional services one-time fees work. Got it. So we have an initial integration fee that is charged to take the client's current content, convert it onto our platform and get them jump started. So the integration fee is a one-time fee customers pay. Um, and then, you know, because companies think of our purchase as an enterprise purchase, they budget it, you know, we don't really have a monthly recurring stream. Most of our companies pay us up front for the year. So a lot of that number is, you know, clients that range from one year to two year deals who um, in some cases, because of being so bought into the product, they might pay for the whole thing up front. Got it. Now, do you require they pay up front or, or they choose to, or they can pay more monthly? Uh, I mean, we try to get it all up front. <laughs> yep. So, uh, you know, we definitely, uh, we'll start, we'll start with uh, the ask for, for all up front. In some cases we might drop the, semi-annual or quarterly, but in actuality, because we're a training purchase, you know, uh, companies don't just make the switch to us and think they're going to quit after three months. So we have a pretty good track record of getting companies to pay uh, for the full year up front. How many people have paid for one year and then not renewed at the end? Zero. We have a hundred percent retention. Okay. So are you not charging enough? I, I think that that's always the million dollar question is what is the ceiling? So uh, but, you know, I, I probably would answer that by saying we should always be trying to charge more. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's rare that you have a company like this that has 0% churn. Like it, it can mean a few things. It can mean you're not charging enough and it's a steal for the customer because you provide so much value. Um, it could mean that you have your top of the funnel really dialed in. So you're turning away everyone who's a bad fit, right? Uh, it could mean a bunch of things, which what would you, what would you credit 0% churn to? Yeah. I mean, I'd probably, I'd probably credit to the fact that the, product doesn't infringe on enough other products in their learning stack yet, which is something that as we continue to develop our product roadmap and we begin to impact other budgets or other uh, products they have in their stack, um, you know, either A, we're going to get a heck of a lot more, uh, 
you know, we're going to increase our revenue per, per company or uh, we're going to see some churn out. And what is your, for people that aren't familiar with your backstory, so what year did you launch the company in? We launched the company, you know, officially as a game platform. I mean, like anything, we started, you know, we started on this thing kind of part-time early on as a consulting company about six years ago. And then about two and a half, you know, called three years ago, we started um, middle of 2014. We started to develop the product. We started selling uh, 2015. So we've been full, you know, full speed ahead selling the platform since Q1 of 2015. The last time we spoke, which is about seven or eight months ago, you had about six folks on your team. Are you still at six or have you shrunk or grown? We're at 20 now. Okay. You're tw so a lot more expenses. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot more people running around. So did you rate, look, your 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 monthly recurring revenue only went from about 58 grand up to 70 grand, you just said, but your team size more than quadru almost quadrupled. So how are you covering all those expenses? Yeah, we raised some money. Got it. How, okay, good. <laughs> there we go, baby. How much did you raise? So uh, we're, we're, we're in the middle of a raise right now. We're raising, uh, raising 1.2 million. We've raised 400K. We've closed on 400K right now, and we're hoping to close the rest before, uh, before disrupt here mid-month. So $400,000 has already come into your bank account. You're already using it. And, was that a, was that a, and is that the only capital you've raised so far in the company? That is the only – I mean, we, we actually – the only other check was uh, we went through the 500 Startups Accelerator about a year and a half ago. That was the only other outside money. So you raised the 400 grand. Was that on an equity round or a convertible note? Convertible note. Okay, got it. And did you do like a safe or one of those typical things? Get a, a kiss note. Okay, and explain to everyone what a kiss note means. So it's a it's a convertible note. It converts to equity. It's very similar to a safe note. Um, but we set a valuation cap for us. Our valuation cap was five million. Uh, the the note converts to equity at a future date or the completion of our next equity financing. Okay. And is it smart for you to say like in a public place like this that you've raised 400K, but you really want 1.2 million? Don't you lose a little leverage by saying that? I mean, well, I, I would say yes, if we didn't have, uh, you know, a few, a few very active and hot conversations going right now. So mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're in the FOMO stage right now with a lot of the conversations we're having. How do you how do you, though, create like as an investor, like if you were trying to get me to put call it 100 grand in, I would say eh, I can afford to wait a little bit. He's only got 400 out of the one point two. What forcing function are you going to create to get people to actually close these checks to get up to one point two? It has to do with, you know, I think it has a mix it has a mix to do with some of the investors that we're already pretty deep in, in active conversations with. I think it also has to do with our sales pipeline. I think so many uh, startups don't think about the, uh, the current state of their sales pipeline as they're having active conversations around fundraising. We have a number of very large enterprises that uh, if they close within the next two weeks, they might drastically change the way we think about the current seed round. We might just close it and to, you know, call a day until we have to come back to Series A in a few months from now. Uh, so we're in a very, very strong position. We have a few pretty big active, pretty big clients, pretty very large hospitality client in our pipeline, a very big automaker in our pipeline, and probably one of the biggest sports leagues in the world in our pipeline. If two out of those three close in the next 15 to 20 days, um, we might not need to raise as much as uh, as as we have currently up on the board. So many would argue like money from customers is way better from money from investors. Why not just screw the note and just focus on just closing those three accounts? I think you have to have you have to be proactive. So as an as a founder, my responsibility is to drive the ship with my team. Like we're not going to need to fundraise. However, it would be irresponsible of me to not still have active conversations going. Mm -hmm. So one hundred percent. We've built this business here by selling to customers. I would rather raise money through sales. Uh, however, you know you have you have to think uh, you have to think worst case scenario all the time. What's your goal with the company? What do you want to do with it? I think that we're trying to grow something. To you know, I, I look at this kind of like we're we're running a, we're running a we're running a hundred meter dash right now, and we got a once we get through the hundred meter, uh, we'll figure out if we want to run the two hundred. And if we get through 200, we'll figure out if we want to run the marathon. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we're not at we're not at the uh, for Usain Bolt. We're at about the 50 meter mark, and you know the 100 meter mark is the ARR goal we have for ourselves. And which is what 1.3 million. Okay. We get to, we get to, we get to that number here uh, fairly quickly in, in mid 2017. Then we'll start to look at what the 200 meter line looks like. Um, listen, we have a product. We're in a learning space. There's a lot of competition. There's a lot of other tools. 
you know, we would be naive to say that we're going to displace all the other ones. I think that in the stack we're in, we might we are open to uh, we might be another tool in the toolbox for another product, uh, or we might just go uh, might take them to the mattresses here, Nathan. How do you, as an entrepreneur, you raised capital, you've had success driving up monthly recurring revenue. How do you create wealth for yourself? And are you married? Do you have kids? How do you create wealth for your family from the company? Yeah, so I, I just had a daughter. I'm going to start. Congrats. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm going to start bringing her on uh, on some of these fundraising Listen, meetings. have her on the podcast. Make sure she brings bacon and other babies, and we have a hit show. It's going to be a viral video. That's all it is. We're thinking about having her face pop up on the accident tent on the website, you know, so we're, uh, we're going we're gonna to test, test out. Yeah. So can start please, please, please do business with daddy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, so listen, balance is key. Uh, you know, again, we're at war. You know, people might not want to call it what it is, but, you know, we have a, we have a team here that I've tried to build a team that uh, you're going to want to have your back in a bar fight. That's what this whole thing is. And what do you tell them? Who do you tell them you, that you're at war with? We're, we're at war with the status quo. You know, companies have to change to us. No, but who? Like, put a face on your enemy. Uh, brands, LMS, big learning management systems, Cornerstone, Success Factors, Brain Shark. These are platforms that have owned the market. They're there. They're big. Uh, we're, 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 you know, we're, we're coming full speed at them. No doubt about it. Uh, we have to have a team in place who understands that this is a, uh, this is a short show. We have to run full speed. We run full speed and we get some breaks that we need. Uh, then we'll make the decision on where we go from there. Most of your expenses are headcount. Are you spending any money on paid acquisition and new customers? We just started to spend some money on paid acquisition, but to date, you know, the large bulk of our expense is our team. Okay. Got it. And uh, I assume obviously you're, you're not break even yet. You just raised all this capital. Yeah, I mean, we're, listen, I, because I bootstrapped the company for so long, we've always sort of been break even, right? Because every dollar that's sitting is going to go back into the business uh, today. Yeah, right. I mean, looking at Q1, no, because we're starting to uh, deploy some capital. Well, in. What are you burning like per month? Like, like, like 40 grand per month, 60 grand per month? How much does your bank account go down every month? So right, I mean, right now it's about. I mean, you're right. I don't know how you figured that out. Yeah, we're around we're around forty to sixty k right now. Uh, it has to, you know, it's our biggest expense is our is our engineering right now. Yep. Uh, in our engineering expense, we're starting to, like I said, uptick some of the paid acquisition spend. That's probably going to be uh, another sizable jump here in Q2. Um, but you know, again, the biggest shift and the hardest shift I think for a founder in my position is going from being bootstrap and driving through sales to now having some cash in the bank to deploy and being smart about how you deploy it. Many of you know I am buying companies that I really, really like, and there's no quicker way for me to get to the bottom of what is happening on that website than using this tool called NathanLaka.com forward slash hot jar, H-O-T-J-A-R. It basically will give me a recording, okay? When anybody lands on the website, it'll give me a recording of where the viewer is scrolling and obviously does the basic stuff like heat maps too, but I learned so much about where the users are scrolling and clicking on my site using that tool. It helps me increase conversion rates, make more money, and grow those businesses faster. And we'll have to see what happens with those businesses, but I'm buying them. I'm buying them very quick, and I'm using NathanLaka.com forward slash hot jar for all of my website analytics. You can too. I work with them. It's totally free. You can go to NathanLaka.com forward slash hot jar. No credit card required. Again, use it as much as you want, nickthelaka.com forward slash hot jar. I'll see you there. Sam, it's a weird feeling, man. I'm rooting for you. Let's wrap up here with the famous spot. You ready? Yep. Uh, all right. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Favorite business book. Um, I, 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 it's not a business book. I like, I like meditations by Marcus Aurelius. I think every CEO should read it. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? I'm spending a lot of time diving through Jason Lemkin's stuff with Saster. You know, it's something I try to stay uh, tunnel vision, staying away from uh, certain material, and I'm starting to try to dive into uh, understanding the SaaS metrics a little better. What is your favorite online tool, like the dashboard company Clipfolio? Yeah, so favorite online tool right now for us has got to be uh, Growbots. We're using Growbots for cold outreach. Uh, again, I said we spend nothing on paid acquisition, but uh, our first big spend was on an outbound sales platform to help us start to bring some stuff into our pipeline. Growbots has been an awesome tool for how us. How much did, what did that, was that spend? $1,000 a month. Nice. Number uh, four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? 
Uh, four. I said to say new kid and startup CEO. And and by the way, we know you have one kid. Do you have more? Just uh, well, except for my sales guys. But yeah. One- <laughs> One that one that uh, one that wakes me up in the middle of the night. All right, so married, one kiddo, and Sam. How old are you? Uh, I'm 32. All right, last question. Take us back 12 years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Uh, 20 year old self, I wish I knew that. Um, always been a big believer, and you have to over network. I think that uh, I, I would I would network even more. I would think every every single conversation. You have no idea who you're going to see in the future. Um, I would I would put gasoline on that fire, and I think that. Uh, Sometimes we don't realize how every single conversation uh, with a person, you might see that person in the future. It's very important over network. There you guys have it from Sam, 32, brand new little kiddo, startup CEO. He says he would have over or he would have networked even more. Over the past 12 months, he's grown from 61 customers to 80 customers. He went from no funding to $400,000 in funding. He went from 2015 revenue of 700 grand to 1.2 million in revenue in 2016. Uh, again, has about 80 customers customers uh, paying about call it 900 bucks a month. They're doing about 70 grand right now in monthly recurring revenue. Still zero churn up to 20 folks as he looks to close three big accounts or potentially close out his $1.2 million note. Sam, thank you for taking us to the top. Thanks, Nathan. If you enjoyed Sam today, go back and listen to Scott yesterday and how $1 million in personal guarantees that he made led him to a $500 million IPO 15 years later. Unbelievable journey. We dive in from beginning to IPO. It would mean the world to me if you guys got any value from this episode, if you would go leave a review on iTunes right now and then subscribe. You know, I hustle like heck to get these episodes out every freaking day for you guys. And trust me, I love it. I would do it with no listeners. But boy, oh boy, it makes my day and it makes my team's day when we see great reviews and get your feedback. So thanks so much. Okay, Top Tribe, I love giving away free money. I feel like Oprah giving away cars and I have something special for you today. How many of you have heard our super sharp guests talk about success they've had with Facebook and Google ads? Well, all of you listening right now, yes, if you're listening, you get $100 in free AdWords. Here's how you get it. Okay, Again, thanks for listening. Get the free $100 from Google right when you sign up with my website host provider, HostGator. Go sign up now to get your free money. HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Again, that's HostGator.com forward slash Nathan.